Santissima Glory, Glory, Shalama Saramene ne serere vasa. Ora ma seleri asa Shalama te ne damashe. Jesus. We are in the presence of Jesus tonight. We are in the presence of the Holy One. We worship you, Jesus. We love what you do. We love that you love us, God. I thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit that you poured it out on us, God, in a great measure and abundance. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. We are the students. Teach us tonight, Holy Spirit, of spiritual warfare. I yield this prayer to you. I yield this message to you, Holy Spirit. Do what you want with it, God. I'm in your hands now, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. My name is Vito. And uh, thank, thank you, Lex. I asked him to do that, <laughs> to build courage. I said, like, just sit in front and yell. I said, if I get stuck, I start praying in tongues till I find my place. My name is Vito, and uh, many of you know me, and we, and my wife, the whole family, we are in the prayer ministry at this church. We love prayer. Uh, we love the Holy Spirit. We love Jesus. And prayer is just one of the ways we connect to his heart. Prayer is, you know, it's, it's the conversations you have with Him. And the more you talk to Him, the more of His presence gets released into our hearts. So I want to encourage you to pray. Prayer is nothing that's something that's, you know, religion teaches you where you, what's a uh, one-sided conversation. It's a mutual abiding. And when you talk to Jesus, His Holy Spirit strengthens us. So tonight I'm going to finish up uh, the series that we've been having, Fighting Darkness. And we'll be talking a little bit about um, how to practically pray, breaking down uh, demonic strongholds, breaking down uh, curses in our lives, and uh, dealing with the darkness that is in our heart and our soul. And I want to talk about um, this one scripture. I'm going to read it. It's 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 3 to 5. And Paul kind of lays out uh, this for us. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know, as we already know, we heard that we are in a spiritual war. Did you know that as Soon as you, get, as you get born again, from the very first time when you come to the cross and the blood of Jesus cleanses you from your sins and the Holy Spirit resurrects your human spirit and you're still a spiritual baby at this point, we enter the spiritual war as spiritual infants. The spiritual war becomes a life to us because we become alive to God. There's war going on in the spiritual realms between God and the devil. And when we get born again, when we become the children of God, we become part of that war. The devil can't hurt God. There's nothing he can do to him. The closest thing he will contend is for his children. He will go after his children. So we have this scenario that where God and devil contend for the hearts of man. But we are spiritual beings. Did you know that you come from God? He's the father of spirits. He has breathed you into your body and you became a living soul. We're always spirit first. When God looks at us, he looks us through our human spirit. Now we have a soul that gets activated when we enter the body and we live in a physical body. So when you look in the mirror at yourself, at your physical body, it's not you, really you. It's your house that you live in. The real you, the spirit man is inside of that body. That's real you. That's who you are. 
And so the Bible says that when we receive uh, Jesus, when we come to the cross, we get born again. Our born again spirit becomes alive to God. It has actually the full righteousness of God. It is holy. In fact, our human spirit, our born again human spirit cannot be improved upon. It has the full righteousness of God. Holiness. So how does God look at us when I get born again? Fully righteous. Holy. That's what the Bible calls us saints. Why? Because he looks at us from the position of our born again spirit. Where the blood of Jesus covers us. We're hidden in him through a human spirit. Now, the problem is, is not in our human spirit that loves Jesus. The problem is with our soul and our darkened heart. That's where the issues are at the core. Is our darkened hearts, our darkened emotions, our negative emotions, our experiences that we had. So a lot of times when people get saved, they get water baptized. You know, they feel the presence of God. They, they feel something's different. They feel there's a change. They cannot explain it. They say, I know I am saved. I can't explain it, but I know that I know. Because the Holy Spirit bears witness to our spirit. But then they come home. All the negative emotions, all of the problems, all of the addictions, they're still there. And the devil uses that moment to lie to people and he would say, you're not really saved. Look at you. Look at your thought patterns. And he lies to people. And, and if a person doesn't know, doesn't read the Bible or is new to, to the faith, he gets confused because a preacher told them that when he accepts Jesus, he'll have more friends, more money, and more anointing. But when he comes home, there's issues that were unresolved for many, many years. And more than that, a person finds there's war is waging within his own self. Something has happened where he's not okay with sin anymore. Before that, he was a happy sinner. Now sinning is a problem. He doesn't feel good to sin. Why? Because there's light in, there's in his human spirit. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit is thrown on his heart. And it's telling you, don't do this. Don't go there. Don't watch this. Don't listen to that. And this war is waged, you know, on the inner part of ourselves. And the and people get, if they don't know, they get disillusioned and they believe the lie of the devil that they are not saved. That something's wrong with them. And a lot of times the devil wins. They leave the church. As soon as they leave the church, that's when problems happen. That's when spiritual death will take hold. If you are born again and you set your heart to obey Jesus, if you don't quit, you win. The devil wants you to leave the church. To get offended at God, at circumstances, so you would leave the church. But if you set your heart to obey, you win. So what happens to our soul? Well, our soul gets activated where our human spirit enters the body. We become a living being, a living soul. And depending where you're born, our soul is, it's, which is our personality, it gets shaped and formed in the environment it, 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 no, it's born in. So if, you, if you're born in Ukraine, you like certain foods, you know, you listen to a disco, I don't know, like techno, whatever, <laughs> right? If, you, if your soul is uh, formed in the Midwest, it's more country music, different types of food and all those things. Right. Lex knows. <laughs> His soul has been transforming. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> Midwest, all right, cool. So that's our personality. We're shaped in the environment, people we talk to. Our soul, if you want to use that analogy, is like a clean sheet of paper. As we are born, every experience is written on it, followed by an emotion. Positive experience, positive emotion gets written down. Negative experience, it will attach itself a negative emotion and it will be written down in our soul. So a lot of times you would, you would uh, when you're growing up, you would uh, you know, wake up in the morning and, and let's say grandmother bakes cookies every morning and that's part of your, how you um, do life. 
10 years, 20 years, doesn't matter how, how long years go by. As soon as you smell that, all of the positive emotions pop right back up as you were a kid. For sure. For sure. Same with the negative. If your parents or the environment you were in was, wasn't very good, and they were cursing you, you were coming home, and they were said, you know, I, wish, I wish you were never born, all those things, well, what does it do? It writes on our soul. And there's a bad and negative emotion attached. And then we get triggered. When we hear something similar or see a similar situation, everything that's negative that's associated with that, it comes right back up. That's what happens. Well, the Bible is, uh, it says that the Word of God in Hebrews 4.12, it says that our spirit and soul are divided. And for a good reason. Because if our spirit and soul were united, like Adam walked in unity, we would see a spiritual world. But because of sin, God had to sever the tie between spirit and soul, so we don't see into the spirit realm. In fact, God says you must not go there. Unless God connects your spirit and soul and you can see certain things, God has divided so we can live our lives. Imagine taking a shower and you see both demons and angels everywhere. It's really hard. <laughs> so God had mercy on people and he did that. So our soul, it uses five main senses. And we know that our soul is tied to our body through blood. So our soul uses our body in five main senses and we know it's you know sight smell hear right taste and touch those are the five gates if you can remember five gates to our heart things don't just pop into our heart they have to enter through one of those five gates well you know things we see what we should maybe seeing or we hear what we shouldn't be hearing it comes into and knocks on the door of our heart. Our mind protects our heart. A mind is a doorkeeper. Let's say you see something. You have a split second decision, let it inside or reject it. Just like that. So that's why Bible says for us to be sober. What happens to our mind when we are not sober? The gates are open. And all the influence pours right into our heart and it darkens our heart. Jesus says, out of the heart. Where is all that stuff coming? It's out of the heart. That means that the person had, had let this in into his heart, let it root there. And then all of that is just action after action after action of trouble. So... What do we do? That's where the spiritual warfare comes in. Our job is to align our soul to the values of our born-again spirit. It is up to you and me to do that. God's not going to do that for you. You must choose. He made it that way that you must choose life. You must choose spirit. Well, what does it mean to choose spirit? Well, it means that you make a decision, a conscious decision to follow the Holy Spirit that lives in your spirit or the values of the Holy Spirit. So you wake up, a thought pops into your head. If it's, from, if it's from the devil, if it's from a memory, you say, in the name of Jesus, I reject it. Does not align to the values of the Holy Spirit in my spirit. I say, I break that agreement. I don't, I don't accept it. Negative emotion triggers up. You don't just accept it. You say, in the name of Jesus, I reject that. Does not align to the value. I am in Christ. I put on Christ. That's how you actually you put on Christ. Is you align your soul to your spirit. Well, that's how we grow. That's why there's church. That's why there's teachers, preachers. All those people to help us what? To bring our soul into alignment with our human spirit. And then that's when we become mature believers. Where we can discern good from evil. Well, what happens when there's um, areas in our life where, where we find that we cannot overcome? Let's say, for instance, you know, you get saved and, and you had powerful uh, maybe drug addictions. Uh, and that's real. I mean, it's, it's not only tied, you know, uh, to your soul. It's tied to your physical body. There's chemistry going on. There's so many things. There's demonic energy on that. Like, what do you do? Well, there's ways to break free from that. 
But you can only do that from the position of your born again spirit. Because when we are born again, we have the right or the authority as children of God to take possession of our land. In fact, we have to. Uh, you know, uh, Canaan or the promised land, there were a lot of giants. And Israelites had the promise they would never lose a fight. They would never lose a war. But they had to take it by the sword. Not to make peace with them. Not to communicate with them. He said, exterminate them, all of it, and take possession. The land is good. Our soul is good. It's us. It's, our, our soul belongs to us. We have to take it back by the sword, by the word of God. All right, so we come to the point where, look, what do we do, practically speaking? Well, first, we start with the first thing. You must submit every area in your heart to the lordship of Jesus through repentance. Everything has to be submitted to the lordship of Jesus. Now Jesus going to his last battle with Satan. You remember in, in, in John. And he said these words. John 14, 30. He said, for the ruler of this world is coming. And he has nothing in me. That's how we live our lives. Before we go, you know, pray for uh, people or, or break different things. You have to make sure the devil doesn't have a foothold in your own life. You will have zero spiritual authority if you're struggling with things and you go try to pray for people that are struggling in the same areas. The devils will just laugh at you. I mean, it doesn't work that way. To walk in spiritual authority, you have to align to the spirit man. That's where power, that's where the living waters come from. It's from your human spirit, born again spirit. All of it is deposited in your spirit. You're a billionaire that walks all this wealth in your spirit, but we need to withdraw it. Withdraw it. Withdraw it. How do we do that? Well, we walk in close communion with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way to do it. It's called the mutual abiding. Jesus, abide in me and I will abide in you. Well, what does that mean? That means talk to me. Jesus, talk to me and I will move on your emotions. I will move on your heart. But talk to me. That's why reading the Bible and prayer is so important. That's how we get set free. Talking to Jesus and reading the Bible and, and the light that's in your human spirit, it starts spreading into your darkened heart and soul. And it's like a, a big house with many rooms. You know, when you come in and there's no light on, you come in and everything seems fine until you turn on the light. And then you see all the mess and all the garbage. Like, wow, I didn't even know I had this. Well, yeah, because it was dark. But now you can see. Why? Because the light of Jesus is breaking forth from your human spirit. And it's you, but you have to open the door and turn on the light. It's called repentance. You highlight, you don't cover those areas up. You open the door and say, Jesus, fix this. Be truthful. That so this has really been bothering me. This is really what happened to me. Heal me for now, Jesus. Just open the door and the light comes in. And you get set free in your soul and in your heart. We must examine ourselves and expose sin and compromise in our lives. We must do it. But that would imply that we're talking to Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. That we've been truthful to Him and say, Lord, I show me the areas of compromise in my life because I can't see them. I need more light. I need to see why am I struggling why am I having these thoughts? Why am I having these addictions? Why? Shine your light. You have to expose the area of rejection. What does that mean though? That means that there were times in your life, in my life, where things were said, like you're worthless, you're garbage. I hate, I wish you were never born. I wish you were never here. And that really hurts and wounds us as a human heart because we long to be loved we long to belong and when that hurt comes usually a person closes in right in and there's pain and then there's anger that comes in our lives and unforgiveness how dare they did this to me and the devil that's an open door he comes in into our lives and he starts affecting that area and it's an infection that does not go away until you open it to Jesus 
and say, Jesus, this is what happened to me. This is what they said. This is how it made me feel. It made me feel really bad. But Jesus, heal me from this. Wash it with your holy blood. Cleanse it with your Holy Spirit. And I forgive that person in the name of Jesus. I let him go. I break my agreement with the spirit of unforgiveness. I break it now. I don't want it anymore. Be gone from me in the name of Jesus. Then you go into self-pity. So we do. It's our next step. We start having self-pity. and That's from the devil. It's woe is me. Same thing. We repent of it. And we say, I break my agreement with that. Spirit of self-pity, be gone from me in the name of Jesus. Because then it turns into self-hatred. Things people say into your life, then you look in your mirror and you say, I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate how I look. I hate it. Everything people said, all these lies, people start hating and say, I wish I was never alive. And then the demons of suicide pull up. They work in packs like rabid dogs. And they say, you should kill yourself. Nobody will miss you. Nobody needs you. And people listen and they don't know. They think it's their thoughts, but it's the demons lying to them. And we said, Jesus, and we have to pray those prayers. If, if it was the case, said, Jesus, I, I said some bad things. I cursed myself. I said, I wish I was never born. I, I said those things. Forgive me, Jesus. Wash me with your holy blood. Cleanse me with your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I just break my agreement with that right now. In the name of Jesus. I break all of those roots, all of those fruits of self-hatred, demons of suicide and death. I break it now in the name of Jesus. You have to use that language in the conversations with the Lord. And you will notice how you, you feel it. You actually feel it breaking off you. Because you need to say those things. You need to allow Jesus to wash it clean with His blood. To cleanse it with His Holy Spirit. And there's of course areas of different types of abuses it's very painful it doesn't go away unless you give it to the Lord you have to open it well I never told anybody this well you'll be carrying that for the rest of your life it's hard for you to grow in love when you have this in your life you give it up to the Lord you don't need to carry that anymore but you have to tell them what happened say Jesus wash me with your holy blood heal me from these wounds and you have to forgive people that did that to you and expose the area of pride, rebellion, deception, lies and forgiveness, thoughts of sin, all, all of that. Holy Spirit will highlight them as you go. Will highlight them. Will point them out. If you're being honest with Him in, in, a, in conversations, He will show you. He will shine His light. And you will receive freedom. And the light of Jesus that's in your human spirit will start invading your heart and your soul. The first commandment is what? Is to love God with what? All of what? Heart, soul, mind, strength. Your spirit is fine. It loves God. But we have to love God with our heart, our emotions, everything. So we need His Holy Spirit as the river of life to channel down and align us to his purpose so the perfect will of God Genesis 1 the communion with the Holy Spirit with Jesus and the Father so we'll pray if you want to stand up and I just want to pray over you I will just pray and in this on how to do it and first it's repentance you say Jesus I repent for my sin off and you fill in the blank so Jesus, I repent of it. Forgive me and wash me with your holy blood. I repent for all lies. I repent for all deception, for theft, for rebellion and pride. I repent of it, God. Forgive me. Wash me with your holy blood. Cleanse me with your Holy Spirit. And then you have to reject it. You don't want it anymore. You have to break your agreements with it. And you have to say it out loud so the devil hears it. It said, in the name of Jesus, I reject the demonic spirits of lies, deception. I reject them all in the mighty name of Jesus. I break their roots. I break their fruits in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be gone from me, from my life. We have to cast them out. And then when we do that and the Holy Spirit cleanses us, then we 
have authority to pray for other people because we have lived through that deliverance ourselves we 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 help others because somebody prayed for us Jesus helped us so then we pray for our brothers and our sisters that are so beat down they don't they don't have the confidence to even say those words so they say can you please pray for me it's so hard to even say these things and then you come up and say let me help you just repeat after me Jesus and then you lead him through that prayer but to have that confidence you have to walk in righteousness meaning align your life to your human born again spirit where Holy Spirit is Lord where Jesus reigns hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit I thank you God for this church I thank you for these people Lord and I bless you Lord I bless you God I pray that you would set people free tonight Holy Spirit Holy Spirit breathe on us breathe on us God breathe on us breathe on us from four winds come Holy Spirit and breathe on the slain according to Ezekiel 37 breathe on those bones God that are dead maybe somebody here's thinking I've gone too far it's all over with me I don't want to live anymore what's the use I've tried church and it's not working I pray Jesus that you would breathe on him right now breathe life into them God hope into them God breathe God I break the lies of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ it is not over Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord it is not over Jesus is Lord glory there's just so many people that are hurt growing up and they're just there were some hurtful things spoken to you by your parents and that translated into your life how you're treating your children it has become a pattern this is the time where you say I take a stand I'm gonna break with that generational curse in my life it stops with me now in the name of Jesus 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 Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit move on our hearts tonight God move Lord come on glory suicide so many suicidal thoughts people have there's people battling suicide here can see it the devil is a liar he's a liar your life is precious to God and he knows it you come from God he's your father that's why you have that void in you your spirit longs to reconnect with your heavenly father just turn to him in repentance ask Jesus to touch you right now and just rebuke the lies of the devil demons of suicide I break your curses over the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus spirit of death I break your curse over the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be gone from our children be gone from our man be gone from our woman be gone from our church be gone from our land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ there's people struggling with pornography pornography I see it I see it I see it. break agreement with it just pray with me Jesus forgive me for watching pornography God I, I hate it but something pulls me back to that computer I, it's stronger than me but tonight I'm gonna make a stand I'm gonna agree with the Spirit of God in my human spirit I'm gonna agree in the name of Jesus say God I repent for doing this Lord forgive me and wash me with your holy blood and in the name of Jesus Christ I take authority over the demonic foul spirit of pornography and sexual immorality I break it now in the name of Jesus with all of its roots with all of its fruits be gone from my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be gone Hallelujah, and there's spiritual orphans in this place what that means is you feel like you don't belong anywhere you just can't fit in that's a spiritual orphan spirit because of things that happen in your life but Jesus but Jesus Jesus wants to set you free from that you do belong you do belong Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption you do belong you have a family God has invited you into his own family 
the Father, Son and the Spirit, the Holy Trinity, that's the family. We are the children of God. Jesus is the firstborn son. We are his children. We are his offspring. We're dear to his heart. Jesus loves us. You're not an orphan anymore. Break your agreement with that now in the name of Jesus and say no more devil. No more devil. I belong to the family of God. I have friends around me. I have people that love me in this church. The devil is a liar that he wants to isolate you and says people don't like you here. It's lies. Break them in the name of Jesus Christ. People love you here in this church. You are loved. You are accepted. There's people here that have a hard time sleeping, you have terror in the nights, you have a hard time sleeping. I want to just break that off you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus demons of fear I break your curse over the children of God in the name of Jesus be gone be gone from their bedrooms be gone I break the torment off them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I break it now anxiety I see anxiety people are having so much anxiety Rosha Mande Grobo shit I break that demonic influence on the bodies and the emotions and the mind and the heart we break the demon of anxiety in the name of Jesus Christ right now depression we break that off the children of God demons of depression that that bring this negative this where it just covers them and they came to get up from their beds we break those curses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ even now be gone from the children of God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we declare we declare we declare the power and glory of Jesus his beauty his beauty we declare his eyes are like fire his eyes are like fire he has zeal and love for us for his church his hair is white as wool he is righteous he's righteous every single thought he thinks about you is pure it's righteous he loves you he loves you he loves you he loves you hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit for this night Lord hallelujah thank you Lord and we appreciate Vito